The Rhyme of Ancient Mariner, Part 1 The Rhyme of Ancient Mariner is written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. At first, it is about the poet. Samuel Taylor Coleridge was born on 21st of October 1772 at Ottery, St. Mary, Devonshire. His father was a man of great learning. He was educated at Christ Hospital, the famous charity school in London. And after that, he studied at Jesus College, Cambridge. But he left the university without a degree. After leaving university, he married Sarah Frickers. He was an intimate friend of William Wordsworth. In 1798, he, along with Wordsworth, published the famous lyrical ballad to which he had contributed. His Biographia Literaria, that is, literary autobiography, presents some of the most philosophic principles of poetic composition. But this great poet died in the year 1834 on 25th of July. The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. It is an ancient mariner and he stoppeth one of three. By thy long grey beard and glittering eye, now wherefore stoppest thou me? The bridegroom's doors are open wide, and I am next of kin. The guests are met, the feast is set. Mayst hear the merry din? He holds him with a skinny hand. There was a sheep, called he. Hold up, unhand me, grey beard loon. If soon his hand dropped he. He holds him with his glittering eye. The wedding guest stood still and listens like a three years child. The mariner hath his will. The wedding guest sat on a stone. He cannot choose but hear, and thus spake on that ancient man, the bride and mariner. The ship was cheered, the harbor cleared, merrily did we drop. Below the curb, below the hill, below the lighthouse top. The sun came up upon the left, out of the sea came he. And he shone bright, and on the right went down into the sea. Higher and higher every day, till over the mast at noon. The wedding guest here beat his breast, for he heard the loud bassoon. The bride hath passed into the hall, red as a rose is she. Nodding their heads before her goes the merry minstrelsy. The wedding guest he bit his breast, yet he cannot choose but hear. And thus peck on the ancient man, the bright eyed mariner. And now the storm blast came, and he was serenious and strong. He struck with his overtaking wings and chased us south along, with sloping mast and dipping prow. As who pursued with yell and blow, Still trades the shadow of his foe, And forward bends his head, The ship drove fast, Loud rode the blast, And southward I we fled. And now there came both, Mist and snow, And it grew wondrous cold, And eyes, must I, Came floating by, As green as emerald, And through the drips and snow eclipse, did send a dismal sheen. Nor ships of men, nor beast we ken, the eyes was all between. The eyes was here, the eyes was there, the eyes was all around. It cracked and growled and rolled and howled like noises in a swamp. At length did cross an albatross, through the fog it came, as it had been a Christian soul. We held it in God's name. It ate the food it never had ate, and round and round it flew. The eyes did speed with a thunder feet, the helmsman steered us through. 
and a good south wind sprang up behind. The albatross did follow, and every day for food or play came to the mariner's hall. In mist or cloud or must or shroud it perched for vespers night, while all the night through fog smoke white glimmered the white moonshine. God save thee, ancient mariner, from the fiends that plague thee thus. Why lookest thou so? With my crossbow I shot the albatross. Now the word meanings, part one. Ancient, very old. Mariner, sailor, or seafaring man. Stop it, stopped. One of the three, one of the three wedding guests. Die. Your, glittery, shining brightly. Actually here, we should mark the intelligence of the marine. Wherefore, why? Thou, you, kin, means relative, mayest, can't you, merry, happy, din, confused noise, quote, say, hold off, take off your hand, unhand, leave me, Loom, a mad person. If soon, at once or immediately. Dropped, left. Hath, had. Will, wish. But, except. Spake on, spoke on. Bright eyed, glittering eyed. It, it means that he was an intelligent person. Merrily, happily, Kirk, church, left, here, eastern side, east, he, here, the sun, right, here, the western side, west, beat his breast, expressed his reluctance to be stopped, bassoon, it is a blowing musical instrument producing deep sound. Pest, stepped. Nodding, moving. Merry, happy. Minsters, musicians and singers. Storm blast, sudden blow of violent wind. He, here, the storm. Tyrannous, cruel or harsh. Chased, drove, sloping, bent, mast, a tall pole supporting sail in ship, dipping, dipping in the water, prow, it is the front part of the ship, pursue, chased, yell and blow, shouts and threats, threats, follow. Here, followed by the storm. Four. Here, storm. Actually, four means enemy. His. Here, the ship. Blast. Storm. I. All the time, or yes. Wondrous. Extremely. Emerald. A precious stone of green color. Drips. Floating ice. Cliff, Steep Iceberg, Dismal, Gloomy, Shin, Gentle Brightness, Ken, Saw, Swound, Soon or Fainting Feet, At Length, After a Long Time, Albatross, It is a large bird with long wings found in the Pacific and Southern Ocean. Hailed, greeted, thunder feet, loud sound like peals of thunder.
helmsman a person steering the ship holo call shroud sails perched sat best first nine time for evening prayer glimmered shone brightly the you fiends devils plague trouble crossbow a very powerful bow and arrow with a trigger now here is the theme of the poem the theme of the poem is the experience of guilt that means the experience of retributive justice and seeking redemption the theme of the poem also deals with relation between spiritual world and physical world. now understanding the poem answer the following question the ancient mariner stopped one of the three wedding guests because he wanted him to listen to his story the wedding guest remarked that he was next of kin which means that he was a close relation of the bridegroom he cannot choose but hear means the wedding guest was forced to hear the story of the mariner the sun came up upon the left out of the sea came he this line tells us that the ship was moving towards the south the wedding guest beat his breast because the sound of the bassoon meant that the bride had arrived and the wedding ceremony was about to begin and he could not attend it the storm blast has been described as being tyrannous because it took complete control of the ship the sailors felt depressed on reaching the land of mist and snow because they were surrounded by iceberg and there seemed to be no sign of life the sailors were happy to see the albatross because it was the first sign of life and therefore gave them hope that they might survive the two things that happened after the arrival of the albatross war the iceberg split and a strong breeze started blowing it perched for vespers nine means the albatross would appear at a fixed time every day god save the ancient mariner from the fiend that plagued thee thus why lookest thou so means the wedding guest wanted to know why the mariner was looking so tormented at last we are coming to the literary device that means the figure of speech that have been used in this poem there are many literary devices many figure of speech we have seen here but some of them i am mentioning here the wedding guest stood still and listens like a 3 years child it is a simile below the curb below the hill below the lighthouse top it is the repetition the sun came up upon the left out of the sea came he it is hyperbole or exaggeration next the bride hath passed into the hall red as a rose is she here it is simile with a sloping mast and dipping prow as who pushed with yell and blow still threats the shadow of his foe it is the personification the sheep is being personified here next the eyes is here the eyes is there the eyes is all around here the eyes this phrase is being repeated this much it is oxymoron oxymoron is a figure of speech where two 
Opposite terms are used side by side to bring out the meaning. And eyes must high came floating by as green as emerald. It is also simile. Here, as green as emerald is the part of the simile. And listens like a three years child, this alliteration. He cannot choose but hear. It is also alliteration, cannot choose. Next, it cracked and growled and roared and howled. This is onomatopoeia or we can call it personification also.